Hello and welcome back. It is time once again to try to fix something and today on the workbench we're taking a look at another dead PS5. Now this one was sent in by a viewer of the channel. I believe his name was Heston. Um, apparently this failed during a power failure, a power outage. Um, after the power failure it never would come back on and I think the owner said he had replaced the power supply or at least tried to replace the power supply and it did not work after replacing the supply either so that's where we're starting from so I'm gonna get the uh, well, I guess I've got it plugged up to see if it does anything no sorry you can't see the buttons no signs of life I am plugged in yeah this is a 1015 by the way so this is the original uh, PS5 no signs of life whatsoever let's get the covers off and see uh, what we run into all right, well, I've got her apart and just went straight to the power supply. I've got the power supply out. Let's just see if she's putting out 12 volts. Yep, 12 volts. So power supply is probably not the problem. So let's get the main board uh, inside, see what we can find. All right, here we are inside at the workbench. And I've been looking at this board. I haven't seen any signs that's been worked on before. And it's not supposed to have ever been worked on, but uh, continuity. Where's, where's continuity? There's continuity. But let's just see if, you think if we have a short on the 12 volts. No, no 12 volts short. Do we have a short on various other power supplies like this one? Nope. Gonna hit some. There's the five volts. It's a common one to have a short on it. Nope, no short. Let's see some of these rails. Make sure I'm looking at what I think I'm looking at. I think this is be where our 3.3 is coming from, or am I looking at the wrong area? Flip the board over. There's the SSD's power supply. Hmm. This should be where the 3.3 is coming from. 1.8, several small voltages. I think that's ground there. No short on the 3.3. Check some of these uh, rails going into the uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. Nope, no short there. Nothing obvious. Now this this may be low resistance here, not too bad. That's ground. Not going to be a quick and easy short, is it? How about around this SSD power supply? I'm hitting ground every now and then. That's why it's beeping. No. I'm hitting some capacitors around the uh, HDMI circuit here. Should probably flip this over and look around the HDMI area some. Fail during a power outage. No obvious shorts. How about this fuse, 5 volt fuse? It's good. That's F7001. See, I think I've already checked this little DC DC converter here. Seems fine. How about F7003? Fine. Uh, F7502. 
Where is it located? I see the marking for it, but I don't. Oh, there's the fuse. All fine. Well, if we don't have any shorts, maybe time to connect the DC power supply to it and see how much current is drawing. So no F3501. She's fine. F7501. Fine. Nothing obvious. Okay. Let me get my uh, DC power supply cranked up. Let's see how much current this thing draws. Okay, well, I think I've got my polarity correct. Positive, negative. Uh, I've got my supply set for 12 volts, half an amp. Let's see how much current she draws. Okay, that was not normal at all. So it does look like the south bridge is not initializing at all. Does a weird 26 milliamp spike sometimes. Yeah, that would tend to make you think there's still something shorted somewhere. Maybe I need to look around the South Bridge. All right, I've got my meter back in continuity mode. So it beeps. Let's look around this South Bridge, right? You see these inductors here? Those are power rails going into it. Nothing there. Oh, yeah. 1.6 ohms on whatever rail that is. That's the same rail coming in a different place right there. Another one up here. But then again, it only takes one short. All right, let's look. I would imagine it's the South Bridge itself that's dead. But that should come from this little chip right here. Which is either a... Is it RT5126? Or a... Oh, what's the part number? I can't remember the dialogue part number, but anyway, there's two different ICs they use there. I didn't see a short on any of these major, like this is a 3.3. Uh, I can't remember if this is like 1.8 or 2. I can't remember the voltages. But one of these rails should be the one going into that IC. Kind of like to find it. This is the five volts coming in through that fuse. Maybe it, I think it's one of these pins. There's no easy test point for it. Is that it? No. Well, where is it? Hmm. Let me get the microscope out. All right. So this is the dialog. DA9065. It makes a lot of the voltages uh, for this board. A lot of the standby voltages. Um, and I think I found our short right here. Yep. 1.68 ohms. So that's the particular output. I'm not sure what that voltage is. Maybe 3.3. I can't remember. But it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think this chip is likely to be bad. It could be bad. But most often it's the south bridge this guy 61 gg um i would imagine that's going to be the cause i mean these chips over here can fail they just don't seem to fail as often as the south bridge does so yeah let's see if we can get that south bridge changed out just to make absolutely sure 
think what I will do is, so here's our short. I think I'll lift this coil. I may have to lift another one, but I'll lift this one. Let's just make sure that when I lift it, the short on the supply goes away. No point in changing out that south bridge unless we have to. going to add a little leaded solder to it just to help it come loose a little bit Turn that inductor to the side. Let's just see if our short is gone now. Like this would be the supply down here. Yep, it's gone. And this is where it goes into the south bridge. Yep. So that pretty well confirms, unless it's this big capacitor right here, which I really doubt. And I'm pretty sure that's a bad south bridge. Since it did fail during a power failure.
Well, our south bridge has been changed, and I did clean out from under it. Hopefully, get enough, uh, get the flux and alcohol out from under it. Hopefully, I have it clean enough under there. Uh, I did reinstall that uh, uh, inductor uh, on that side of the board that I had lifted earlier. Uh, there's our old south bridge. I have not reinstalled the battery yet. It's time to see how much current this thing draws and see if it looks like it's booting normally now, or initializing normally, if you will. Uh, polarity is correct. I'm set for 12 volts, half an amp. Let's see what she does. Nope. I don't think I got quite enough flux out from under there. Okay, let me do some more cleaning up under this thing. All right, well, I cleaned and cleaned all up underneath the south bridge, and that's not going to be the problem. And I think I have found the problem, though. The problem is lead-free solder balls, which I strongly dislike. If I can show you, look at some of these test points you see coming out from under the south bridge. So I get a diode reading there. And the next one, no diode reading. And then the next one, I will get one. And the next one, I don't. I do get one on that one. These two here. I got I got it reading on one of them and not the other. Nothing there. And I got something there. So this side of this chip is not down properly. And again, it's because it's a lead-free solder. And I'm trying to be gentle with this chip. Um, I had the board heated up to, um, I don't know, 110 Celsius or so. Uh, reading with my you know, thermometer uh, and it's using 365 degree air from above which I thought would have should have done it but no it's not quite enough so I'm gonna have to heat it up again and uh, try to get this chip to sit down it, it looks just looking at it under the microscope it looks pretty good on all the sides except for this one and I think that's our problem we're not we're not able to boot because all the pins aren't connected All right, so I have reflowed the south bridge, and I, I did put it back on the preheater, heated the board up to like 110 Celsius, and then hit it with 390 degree, three, 390 Celsius air from above, or heat from above, I should say. Um, these boards take a lot of heat, and that's lead-free solder, which I do do not like. But it's either do this or rebought with leaded solder, which maybe that's what I should have done. Ready to test again. She's still a little toasty, but not too bad. Uh, polarity is right. Let's see what we do this time. There we go. It looks better. I saw a peak of 321 and then come back down to, yeah, 8 or 10. Or, that looks totally normal. All right. All right. I think this board is repaired. It's time to get it back out there in the garage and the chassis. And let's just see if it is truly repaired or not. It's about time. Well, here we are back out in the garage. Uh, our south bridge has been changed, and the current draw looks to be somewhat normal. So I think the south bridge is at least initializing the system. So I think she's going to do something more than she did before now. Um, fans connected. Let's just see. That looks encouraging. Oh, I saw the monitor lock. Come on. It's thinking about it. Still flashing blue right now, though. But she's thinking about it. There we are. Repairing console storage. Okay. I think we are back to life. Um, I'll let it finish coming up. Um, I need a little cleaning on that fan. Look like a little dusty. But let me get this thing back together. And we'll give it a uh, an assembled test out. How's that sound? 
That looks encouraging, though. Yep. All right, well, the PS5 is fully reassembled now. And hopefully she still turns on. Let's see. We have lights. We have video. I think she's going to be all right. There we are. All right, Heston, your uh, PS5 is repaired. I'll get this back in the mail to you as soon as I can. Uh, and that wasn't too too difficult of a repair, but uh, I made it difficult by uh, not using enough heat on that south bridge. But it happens sometimes. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thought it was somewhat interesting, educational, funny, whatever. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.